Hey, what's up everybody? Alright, so uh, tonight we're going to start off a little bit differently than uh, I usually start off. We're not going to start off with the typical ration related items, which uh, I'm going to finish off the Polish military SRG menu number 5 from last week. Because as of right now, that's just from what I've had from this ration, it's probably right in my top three, top five rations I've ever had. Absolutely fantastic. And uh, I, don't, I don't have a negative thing to say about it so far. Uh, everything's been top notch. Um, as you notice in the thumbnail, we have something here that is, uh, is quite different. And this was courtesy of Gabe or Gabrilla and his channel link is right at the top of my description so anybody checking this out right now wants to check out Gabe's channel he has gone through more old drinks than uh, anybody probably anybody ever on YouTube and I say that with confidence uh, he's ve he's very uh, <laughs> he's he just goes for it he, do he doesn't care he just drinks he's drank some really crazy stuff um, but he actually gave this to me in person. Little backstory on it, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it before I, I dig into it. So, and it's cold right now too; it's ice cold. So, back I don't know; it's probably been a year, in, in between a year, year and a half ago, something like that. I would say. Uh, I know it wasn't this past winter, but it was the winter before, so it's been a while. He actually gave this to me in person, and. Uh, I've just been hanging on to it ever since. And I didn't realize how rare this particular one is. They made this these in a few different colors. I've seen red, um, blue. I think there was like an orange color maybe. But I know for a fact that there was red and blue and yellow. And yellow is by far the rarest of the World's Fair beer colors. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know why that is. I don't have any clue. These were sold not only as a collector's item, but also as, you know, a drinkable collector's item. I mean, you could drink it and save the can, but I mean, I would say most people would want to save it with the, with, with the seal intact. Now, I know from what I've read, they sold up to 6,000 cases of this stuff. And it was cheap. It was, according to the the general consensus, what people say about this beer is it was horrible whenever it was fresh. Nobody had anything good to say about it that I could read. Um, but one thing I will say that was that was quite interesting whenever I started doing some research on this is in 2017 they actually remade this this exact beer. Well, it had the exact same can. The label, everything was the same. They did it in all the different colors. <clears throat> so there's a 2017 version of the World's Fair beer from Tennessee. Now, they set up in Knoxville, Tennessee. <clears throat> Excuse me. They set up in Knoxville, Tennessee, and they, uh, they, they built the place up Great big, huge, really nice. They wanted it to be sort of like a, uh, um, you know, an industrial park after, after the World's Fair was over, which it lasted about six months. And during that time, they, they thrived. They did really well. Uh, I think there was something like $500 million in revenue for the, you know, what went through hands of the local businesses. And I think they, they, pulled in like 25 or 30 million on uh in the world's fair in general just for the you know what it was for the event but they spent way way more than what they got back and because of that they went into some huge debt and after the six months after the world's fair was over and it, and it closed up the place just fell, I mean, it just fell into uh, disrepair. I mean, everybody moved out, all the businesses, not all, but most of the businesses, I should say. And it, it's a really interesting story 
which this is also significant to me because I was born in 1982. And I'll give you a little closer look at the can here. Right there on the bottom, you can see Knoxville, 1982. And then Okinawa is uh, 1975. And then we got Spokane in 1974. Osaka in 1970. And uh, San Antonio in 1968. Over here we have some more. Let's see what's on the bottom here. Uh, Montreal, 1967. New York, 1964. Seattle, 62. Uh, Brussels, 1958. And New York, 1939. So the, the whole theme of the 1982 World's Fair was energy. And, you know, anything energy-related was kind of the theme. They built this great, big, huge... Um, I don't know what you would call it. It was like a glass... A golden glass ball on top of it looked like a golf ball sitting on a tee kind of but it was a great big huge building had a restaurant on top if you look that building up it's really interesting looking and the World's Fair itself while it was going on was very successful they it's as far as I know it's the one and only World's Fair that China ever attended so that's that's pretty significant and interesting if you think about it all the World's Fairs throughout the years and that's the only one that China actually did attend and they and I they had nothing but positive things to say about it um, there's so, there's so much information about the 1982 World's Fair some of the cool stuff that I, I've, I've seen looking through some of the archival footage and some of the other information was uh, there was that's the first place that they displayed and uh they promoted pay at the pump and i think it was chevron um that put up well they they had up uh you know people would go up and they would pay at the pump just like we do now all the time back then listening to them talk about it how they was like oh yeah this will probably be a big thing it, it is now it's standard it's it's you know it's commonplace everybody pays at the pump it's very very typical and they had a uh i think it was a 1982 it was either a lincoln town car or a cadillac and they could make a telephone call from the car and they were just absolutely amazed that they they were making a telephone call from the car there's there's some archival footage of this fella sits down and he makes the phone call and i, I think he called his mom and he's like you're not going to believe where i'm calling you from and he said i'm calling you from a car and they, like the, the crowd went went crazy and and it was really really interesting so uh it was fun to watch all that really cool archival footage but after the world's fair was over that place basically just more or less shut down i mean there was a few businesses that hung on for a while but within two years whenever they moved uh new orleans was the next place and it was two years later that they did the world's fair in new orleans which there's a, uh, in 1984, they have a World's Fair beer that looks very similar to this for 1984 as well. And New Orleans did it completely differently because they learned a lot from Knoxville's mistakes, how they ran the, the you know, their budget and how they built the place up. They actually made the World's Fair pay them, this is, I'm talking about New Orleans, made them, the World's Fair pay the town or the city $15 million dollars for re renovating all the roads for the place and uh that that's they did all kinds of different things like that budget wise to keep them from going under now this beer was uh, more or less notoriously bad let me see if i can pull up a photo really quick for you guys i want to show you the remade beer i think i i think i have a screenshot of it haven't been able to watch the chat much <clears throat> i did invite uh josh to this live stream i don't know if he'll make it and i also invited matt braley which was the showrunner director slash you know producer the main dude for the uh, eating history sent him a link as well let's see screenshots here we go there we go yep i'm gonna be able to show you guys so this is the remade 
beer that they made in 2017. This is the red label, obviously. But as you can see, it's the exact same label. And uh, they, they, they took old beer tap handles and reused and remade those. Because I guess a lot of the bars kept them around as, as mementos from the 1982 World's Fair. And uh, they changed the entire formula on the beer and made it a pale ale. And I guess it was much more palatable. But it was, it was all about the nostalgia. So it's really cool to see that they had done that. I never dreamed that I would I would stumble upon the fact that they'd remade this 35 years after the initial World's Fair, so that was really cool. Uh, and I know that Ronald Reagan he visited the the opening day, which I think was May. I don't know if it I don't know if it says on here. I don't think it does. But on the can here it says in honor of Mike Gleason, E. B. Coolman. And Joe Murphy. So this each can was was commemorated to those fellas in honor of, which I, I find that a little bit odd. I guess I mean it's cool that it's that they thought enough of those fellas to do that, but kind of a weird marketing angle, I guess, to have that on every can. But it's cool that it's got each one of the the places and the years on the can. It's definitely a collectible can. I would say a can like this sealed probably goes for 20 or 30 bucks online. I could be wrong. What's up, James Ortiz? And uh, what are, who we got right here? Zombie Bites again. Uh, G. Schultz. Uh, Corey. Miss Marilyn. Uh, Miss Marilyn is wonderful. I'm going to beat um, Tracy to the punch on that one. G. Schultz is here. Who else is here? I have a feeling that my notifications and stuff did not go out for this today. Uh, numbers are about half of what what we normally have this the, at this point in the live stream, the very beginning like this. We usually have anywhere in between 80 and 90 within the first 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, Outdoor Tactical, what's up, Vasily? Hello, everyone. Smokey, glad you decided to make a live stream. Yes, sir. Never heard of that remake. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool that they've done that, I thought. Uh, it's a local brand. I would say it probably made it, uh, I don't know, statewide, I would say. Maybe it crossed over to Kentucky or something like that. Let's see. Tyler N., what's up? James Murray, what's up? Uh, everybody everybody know where Karsten is or do you mean anybody know where Carson is? Uh, Texas. I lived in Texas. I was eight. Some of the best years of my life. Um, Christine, my dad had a car, mobile phone. I was, this wasn't actually a mobile phone. It was the, the actual car. This was. I guess this was just prior to them having those um, like. I don't know, the, the, the pickup telephones, this actually went through the speakers and there was a microphone in the car that picked up your voice. It was really cool to watch. But on the dashboard, there was a, a row just of numbers that you, you punched in and it was like zero through nine. And you punched in the number and then it called and it, was, it must have been a Ford uh, or a Lincoln. Because I remember them saying that uh, that Ford and Lincoln gave them six minutes per phone call for free. It was it, of service, so they had five or six minutes. I can't remember which of free service for each phone call. So I guess you could hang up and call right back if uh, you didn't get what you needed out in the first five or six minutes, and uh, keep keep making those phone calls because uh, they just keep giving you the free service. It sounded like. Vince, I'm good. How about you? Sounds like Salty's here. Yep, Salty Crop Collectibles is here. There might be a link to his eBay store in my description. I can't remember if I have it in this one or not. But if I don't, not too hard to find over on eBay. You just got to search him out a little bit. All right, Eeyore is here. What's up, all right, Eeyore? Or Seth? 
I should say. Jeff, what's up? Miss Gale, Zeno Saga, and Kenton is here. K Man, MREinfo.com. You guys go check out MREinfo.com. Absolutely wonderful website to uh, dig your dig your heels into vintage food and, and old rations and rations in general. Great website, tons of information. So I'm 15 minutes in. Not exactly stalling, but let me see. Uh, getting ready. So what I'm going to do, uh, Zeno says, hi, doing well, thanks, Salty says, or Vince, Tyler, so sure nice to see this community hang out and have a good time, a nice break from the, yeah, no doubt, uh, that seems to be what everybody's watching is the, the, the CV news, <laughs> I guess I would call it, the Rona. Where is the card for the Cracker Jack box? I just saw that question from Rod Garage every day. The The card is in a tote or uh, a bin in storage in New York. Whenever the set was broke down, everything was kept. So if we happen to get a second season, we're going to incorporate any of the things that that are still displayable or collectible for instance like the uh the um uh, i think we've had that on the show the automat coffee it, it's been on so that coffee can was amazing beautiful can i wish we would have opened it with the key and opened it instead of opening the bottom but it will display very nicely the way it is it'll sit on the shelf and look like an unopened can still so that's really cool um, there's the, the Cracker Jack card, and we kept one piece of the hardtack, the paper, the wrap, that wrap that you guys seen in the, in the, uh, the hardtack episode, that segment, that piece of green paper that had the writing on it. It's a little bit of inside information here. I, hopefully this will make the webisode. But I'm going to tell you guys anyways. Hopefully it won't get me in trouble. I don't think it will. But the fellow that actually purchased that hardtack, he purchased it as a collectible, I would say. He probably bought more than two pieces. But he bought that. He documented what he bought, wrote that down, the day that he bought it, the time that he bought it, and who he had with him and what he was doing there. Like he was, he was you know, at the 50th anniversary of Gettysburg, and uh, he... he also put on there what regiment that he served with. Uh, I think he was, I think he was on the north. I'm pretty sure. Um, but that that paper was actually a dry cleaning wrap. Like that's how they would have put that ribbon around someone's clothes at the dry cleaners after they cleaned them. And my here's what my theory and my guess is on that, that piece of green um, strap that he wrote on. I would say he had that in his pocket because I would say he had his uniform dry cleaned, his military uniform, and he got it out of storage. It was wrapped up like that. He got to the event, unwrapped it, stuck that, that piece of paper in his pocket, and... That's what he had the right on. It was in his pocket. I think he had his uniform cleaned, and it was wrapped with that ribbon, and that's what he used to write on and document, and then he wrapped that around. He also used a newspaper from the day that it started to wrap the hardtack up, which was really interesting because, you know, it's just cool to read old newspapers like that, but just the fact that it was from the day that it started was really significant, and then that ribbon, but all that was actually in a frame to start with so that is going back into a frame and i would say that the cracker jack card will get framed and put on the wall uh hopefully we get the season two season two will have stuff like that hanging on the walls stuff from season one 
and uh, you know things that are significant can be good callbacks and and things that you guys will recognize from the show. We were talking about this. So every Wednesday, Josh. Whoa, Smokey and everyone is awesome. Hope everyone is safe and well. Can't wait to see if the beer held up. I doubt it did. It sucked when it was new. <laughs> but thank you for the super chat, Jesse. Appreciate that, my dude. Uh, now, Jesse started up a... Now, you guys got to go check out Jesse Michael's channel, by the way. Uh, he just did a IMP the other day. But he started up a Facebook um, eating history page. And... He said he's already, like, he started it less than a week ago, I think, and he's already got 100 people on there. I send him some, like, behind-the-scenes pictures and stuff that he can post over there. I don't have Facebook personally, so that's the reason I'm not on there posting anything or sharing anything. I'm just sharing through Jesse, and Jesse is running that page. So if you guys want to check that out, um, I would assume it's pretty easy to find. I would say it's, like... Uh, it's like eating history on Facebook, I would assume. But, uh, yeah, you guys check out his channel. Check that Facebook thing out. And thanks for the super chat, Jesse. So, uh, but yeah, we had a we had an after show um, after each episode. Well, started like two weeks ago, I think. But Matt, our showrunner, was there. Josh, a, a couple of Josh's buddies was there for the first one. But we were sitting there talking about it, and I... I brought this up because we were talking about how the show it it's you know it seems a little bit rushed in my opinion I th I think but before we ever even started I tried to I pled with them to make it a one hour show and Matt was saying he's like we've had such a hard time cutting parts from this he said usually when you're editing a show like this he's like you have to find things that fluff it up and make it more you know give it more time. He's like, we're having a really hard time cutting things from it. And they actually had to go to history and ask for more, you know, more air time. So the show actually runs longer than what a typical 30-minute show does anyways. I think they gave them like an extra minute and 20 seconds, which doesn't sound like much. But these guys, they factor everything down to the second. So it, it definitely uh, it says something that uh, there, there's so much content there and good content that, that should make TV that they're having such a hard time cutting things out. But yeah, I have, uh, I've waited on Josh and Matt long enough. Whew. We are going to, uh, we're going to dig into this thing and I'm just going to flip the camera around and you guys will see this weird angle of me. Um, minute 20 says a lot. That's ad money they could be making, so it says something good about the show. I hope so, okay, man. I hope so. Um, yeah, they, they they did give them the extra time, which I thought was a good thing, too. All right. I kind of want to dump a little bit of this out in the glass, but then again, I kind of don't want to see it. Uh, I'm going to go with, uh, with what your guys' recommendations and consensus are. If you guys would like to see some of this in the glass before it goes down the hatch, then I will do that. I'm sure I have a clear glass sitting around here somewhere. Whoa, Robin! Uh, Varndo, <laughs> thank you so much for the uh, the the super chat and the uh, the gif. I think those are called gifs. I, that tells you how far out of touch with technology that I am. But I'm pretty sure that's called a gif with a little dancing um like chicken thing with the feather eh, i don't know what that is it's got a feather <laughs> on its head though but thank you so much for that super chat man my goodness um okay salty croc says after a sip let's see it uh i'm not going to be sipping this i am going to be chugging i'm going to drink the entire thing um i don't plan on uh you know really uh playing with it much but that was awesome thank you so much robin um my dog is barking but all right i have a glass here if you guys want to see some of this we'll use the superman glass is the clearest it doesn't have but one the one little symbol on it my other glasses are two-sided the the gremlins one is two-sided the 
Pink Floyd one is two-sided. I mean, this one wouldn't be bad. Okay, Smokey, open it from the bottom. Yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> there's no way. Uh, I mean, I guess I could put a church key through it, but there's nothing that the church key would, would grab onto. I would just have to try to force it through there. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it, but I've done that before. And uh, it didn't turn out too well. Now, what do I have? All right, so something I want to do, because I have a brand new um, board down here. Those dents are from the can just now. What I have here is this uh, this Italian bag. That way, if this thing goes spraying all over the place, it'll get on there and not on my brand new. Uh, backboard there already has the hiccups <laughs> run it under run it under hot water for five seconds yeah yeah I, I I believe that that would probably work I think that would probably decompress it um, who mentioned that who said that uh, metal man said to do that uh, okay Home cooked meal for a large yard ornament. We'll trade home cooked meal for large yard ornament. <laughs> what? I I'm lost with Miss Leah, uh, Tracy's wife. I don't know what she's talking about. <laughs> so it looks I've got this pretty clean up here. Other than there's some like there's a little bit of stuff down in there that I haven't been able to get out. But I didn't run it under water or anything. I just wiped it off. Not this time. I have cleaned it before but i mean i've had it for a year and a half i would say so all right you can tell just by looking at the cap that it's definitely old school i love that old tab it's pretty cool it looks like it's like missing a piece right there maybe not but that looks awful sharp right there but that right there tells you definitively that this is from 1982 so this is 38 years old almost it's it's a month away from being exactly actually no it's uh it's three weeks away from the opening I think of of uh, of the World's Fair I think it was like March 9th wait a minute May May 9th sorry All right, so I want you guys to be able to see this no cuts I'm not doing anything funny here. I just don't want that to spray everywhere. And I feel like it's going to. It's definitely uh, bulging some. What's some of that pressure off? <laughs> yeah, buddy. There we go. I'm still got a good bit of pressure in it. Okay, see this? I don't know what this black stuff is. It came off on my fingers. It must have been underneath the tab. I assume some of that's going to end up inside it. I'm just going to pour a little sip over into here. Oh, that's dark. Actually, doesn't look bad. It's still very carbonated. Mm, looks a little chunky. Yep. Got some chunks floating in it here and there. And that's the stuff off the top. The chunks usually go to the bottom. 
the bigger chunks. So, uh, all right, so we're going to do it like this. And I'm going to flip the camera around. Here it is. And, uh, Oh, excuse me. Oh, that's skunky. Oh, it's almost got a sweetness to it. That's weird. Whew. I don't know. Woo! Sorry about that. <laughs> Spencer Shirley, 1998, High Smoky High G Schultz. God, it's got a, it's definitely got a bitter. Mmm. My mustache is going to smell like 40 year old beer. Focus. There we go. Whew. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah, it's uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, look at that. Remember me saying there was chunks? There's chunks, and it's it feels like there's some left in there, but it's just all it's all that stuff. You guys see that right, right there. Oh. Well, I will rinse that can out, and it'll go up there on the wall, add it to the collection of, uh, of cans. The last one I drank was also from Gabe, and it was a, uh, a, ro a Rose Bowl from 19, it was a Wisconsin versus UCLA Rose Bowl 1994 so this is 12 years older this one is years not chunks that is normal wait it sounds like a never-ending fart <laughs> what I want 40 year old Tabasco Tabasco sauce Chris says uh, the closest thing I think, you know, the easiest way I think you could get some really old Tabasco sauce would be um, from MREs, honestly. And uh, you could get you could get some pretty old. Uh, whoa, Miss Man! Holy jeez, Tracy is more wonderful, and so is Smokey, along with this community. Gee, many Christmas, Miss Marilyn. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, like what to say miss marilyn that is way too much and holy crap there's bob too well miss marilyn I, i'm gonna pause on miss marilyn here for a minute thank you miss marilyn for that uh insanely generous super chat and uh my goodness it's highly 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 appreciated um can't forget to uh i'll bring that back up here shortly and Bob just dropped in to say, hey, everyone can't stay long. Lots to get done. You missed uh, all the links for Bob's stuff is right in the top of my description. The uh, 
the MRE Nation and the Minotaur stuff is still right at the top of my description. I do believe you get a 10% discount over there if you use the OS10 discount code. I don't think that was ever stopped. But thanks for the super chat, Bob. I appreciate that, my man. <clears throat> Holy cow. Sounds like Bob is hard at work. Tracy Phillips comes in and says, Thanks for chugging out like a man. Well, thank you, uh, Fern Bark. <laughs> appreciate the super chat, my dude. Uh, I gotta say, it, it's, it was pretty gross. I don't think... Obviously, you know, every, everybody that had that beer when it was fresh said that it w wasn't good. Um, I'll be honest, though. It really wasn't wasn't horrible. I would put it right along the lines of like a, uh, like a Pabst or something like that, like a Blue Ribbon. <laughs> and it's funny because the company... Let me, let me pull this over here for a second. The company that, that actually made this, this Great Lakes Brewing Company... They used a, um, they used a cold water, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Same way Coors does, like how Coors has the, um, the cold water brewing. They were using the same type of technique, and this company was actually bought by Paps uh, at some point. It went through three different hands, and it finally, ultimately, ended up in Coors' hands. Uh, gotta run, y'all. You better, uh, rewind it there, Bob, and check this beer out. It's put some really cool information in there. It's been, it's been really fun to research that beer. Uh, it's been a good one. The research behind it is really, really cool. Great Lakes Brewing is still around. Was just there in Cleveland not too long ago. Um, Great Lakes Brewing Company, yeah, they're, they're probably still around, but they're owned by Coors the the course company now so the the course company obviously kept that that great lakes brewing company name around to make some different some different brews under their name it sounds like outside of it having like a little bit of a a strange bitterness it was skunky just you know that could be that could pretty much be predicted because it's it's almost 40 years old but honestly i could uh I, I could drink another one of those the only thing that really bothers me and did bother me about that was that the last chug that i did i could feel the chunks in my mouth and going down my throat which i'm not a fan of gelatinous stuff like that and uh that's the hardest part about it in my personal opinion is trying to get that last bit down um, but thank you, Miss Marilyn, for that insane super chat, and thanks, Bob, for stopping by, man, and, and dropping a super chat. Uh, you guys, go check out Minotaur. I don't. Last time I looked, MRE Nation didn't have much or anything, maybe on their website. I don't know how it is right now, but last time I looked, they didn't have anything going on there. But uh, Minotaur did have stuff going on. So, uh, and I know Bob's. Bob and Miss Renee are both in there chugging away, filling orders. So after that, I gotta have a smoke. So, and I'll have this while we go through and see what is left of last week's ration. Jesse Michael says, "Cores, that's cool." Our W R okay. The 1984 World's Fair beer was canned by Dixie Beer, a New Orleans local brewery. Uh, yeah, they did it, and also uh, the, the same company right here also made a, a 1984. They, the the Great Lakes Brewing Company also did a, a a World's Fair beer for 1984 as well. There was a couple different ones for the New Orleans ones, but the uh, the the look of that world, the one I just drank, the Great Lakes made those, and then they re obviously they got remade. So okay, looks like my candy. Might have fell out of there, but we got our cups and stuff there. We'll use one of those cups this time. Let's see what else we got in here. We got a pack of crisp bread. Now, I saw where Delicious corrected me on that, and I think he said that these are rye crisp breads. And uh, you know what? I'm going to double check that because it won't take me but a second. Whoops. Hang on. I just got a weird text here. Okay. 
Yeah, because uh, Delicious was giving me some some tips about this. Uh, okay, I think this is it right here. Oh, no. he. Oh, wait. Okay, never mind. That was on a post from today. So, is, right now in Poland, it is the middle of the night. Okay. Uh, Delicious' comment on uh, last week's live stream. He said, great content. Really have a talent for live performances. It's not... It's not boring, the breaks are not too long, and uh, your flow is natural. I regret the time difference, bec the, the time difference makes it possible for me, makes it, I think he, I regret the, t the time difference makes it possible for me to see it live. Okay, I'm glad you enjoyed the SRG. It has changed a bit, especially the stove. The idea of making it tight, sealed is very good. The crisp bread in this ration is rye, not wheat. Uh, the pork knuckle can I had not long ago in the group breakfast ration. It tastes excellent and is surprisingly low in calories, only about 180 to 190 per 100 grams. He said, so that's diet food. So that was that's really cool to see. I uh, love I love getting comments from him, especially when it has to do with the type of uh, the type of food that he knows about. Uh, da, 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 da. huh? One of my live streams got taken down. Looks like. Why? Weird guys, weird, weird, weird. I don't understand. Anyway, those are the rye crisp breads. So I was correct on the on thinking that. There's the stove kit. Ah, there's the freeze dried fruit. Uh, there's the sharp spoon and fork and knife. Oh, there's what's left over of the 100 gram chocolate bar. And we're going to have, there's the paper. We're going to have a bunch of these tea drinks here. I think some of these are, are not the, the raspberry flavored. I want to try to find one that's normal. Uh, lemon, I think it's lemon. And we have some honey. Put that on the stove. We have, I think this is ch chicken pate. I'll have to double check that. Might be pork. And we have our main, which I'll have to double check what that is. It's some kind of like a meat and vegetable stew, though, I believe. Oh, we have another pack of these, uh, yeah, those things. Oh, chocolate fell out. That's it. That's everything in there. Should be plenty to make up a meal there. I'm not going to use these because last time I did, which I have my other ones right here, I cleaned, and I like to reuse them as much as possible. Rod, Rod, Smokey, do you have any old toys? And if you do, can you show us them? Uh, you know, I have all kinds of old toys and stuff, man. Uh, I've got tons of stuff from my childhood, plus things that I've collected over the years. To be honest, I have collections of, like, probably about... I, I'm going, uh, I'm skipping a bunch of comments there, guys, because I was way behind. But I probably have, I don't know, man. I, I've got so many different collections. I have a Hot Wheels collection of, like, 5,000 Hot Wheels that are all still on the original blister pack on the card. So, tons and tons of those. Let me see what this lunch meat is here. Real quick. So the main is Hungarian vegetable stew with sausage. And uh, looks like this is just going to be lunch meat in this can. Because we had the pork knuckle last time. Uh, raspberry flavored tea concentrate. I'd like to know how many of those are there are in there. I think there's... I don't know, it doesn't say... Hopefully I didn't drink the only raspberry one last time. Because those are really good. Uh, you got the pepper and all that stuff. The chicken breast filet in the cheese sauce was amazing. Absolutely amazing. That beer was actually... You know, honestly, for the age and how, how skunky it should have been, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. To be quite honest, I'm pretty impressed with its age. There's the... Uh, 
Polish issued butt ration or TP or yeah, paper towels you get in the silver kits. Here are the bags and rubber band that comes with it. These are pretty sizable bags, I must say. It's pretty impressive. As you can see, baggies here that they give you. And also in there is a trash bag. That's a trash bag that's wrapped up in there. Awesome. No need for me to have that out there. We don't need that. Maybe I'd unwrap it and show it in a proper review or something, but there's there's not much point in it. I think everybody knows what a plastic bag looks like. Uh, thumbs up if you agree. There's our Be Fresh Wet Nappies. Lemon scent. I will keep one of those out. We have... This is a, another coffee. Man, I'd like to have that coffee. I'll have a... Yeah, I'll have a coffee. But I'm going to have one that Salty Croc sent me. We'll keep the uh, salt and pepper out just in case we need it. Uh, we have two orange candies and one red left. So we'll keep an orange out. And I ate the coffee candy last time. and I didn't eat it while we were live, but I ate it right after the live stream. And uh, it was really good. Very strong coffee flavor, and you have to, you can't bite that thing. Like, you have to suck it until it's gone. <laughs> That's a really great, great uh, phrasing there, but true. A few fresh wet naps here. If I can get them in the bag here. Come on. There we go. Alright, let me see if I can see a difference in these teas. I'm having a piece of that right now. Okay, I'm already seeing a difference. So... I don't know what that says. This one's different. And this one's different. So those two are the same. And these two are the same. I'm going to guess that the longer the longer worded one here is going to be the raspberry one. Let's see. There's no English on this at all. I don't know. Maybe this... Does anybody know if this is the uh, raspberry right here? I think it may... This one may be. Miss Sharon says, Hey, Smokey. What's up, Miss Sharon? Um, again, i got to say a huge thanks to Miss Marilyn. You guys need to go check out Ann and Allen uh, Gooey Butter Cakes, too. And they also sell coffee and what and whatnots over there as well. Um, what what? I'm almost exclusively a cheap beer drinker tonight. I'm sipping a rum and coke. Whoa! Look at that. Breaking out the the swanky stuff, the good stuff. I don't know. I don't think anybody in the comments can read Polish. You know what? I should translate this. See if I can pull up my translator real quick. I always have a problem finding it in my apps. Translator. It's not there. There it is. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah. Um. Polish camera. Let's see if we can pick this up. Mm. Lime flavor with green tea extract. Okay. 
So that's the lime flavor. And this one, what's this one say? Forest fruit. Yep, forest fruit. Too much reflection. There's the lime flavor. Lime. And forest fruit. Okay, so we're going with the lime this time. Put these others away. Well, crap. Hang on, guys. It's made a mess. <laughs> um, I gotta say, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, that beer, yep, it affected me. Uh, as, as, obviously, as you'll be able to tell, I do not drink period in the story i just don't <clears throat> now this is this is called hungarian vegetable wait hungarian vegetable stew with sausage so this should be interesting i'm going to go throw this in to heat it up i'm going to grab the crisp breads that i have left over too and see if they're still any good i put them in a baggie but uh, i'll be right back Alright, same as last time, I'm only going to give that like five minutes to heat up. Um, this is something I probably won't eat if it's like pate. I mean, there's not there's not a point in me really opening it and wasting it, but uh, I mean, I'll open it if you guys want to see it, but I'd rather give it away to somebody who will eat it. Not a fan. Uh, the stuff last week was not like pate. It was more like a Almost like a sausage. Alright, here we go. <clears throat> right. Okay, now this week, I'm going to be having, if I can get it out of there, a coffee instant type 2 instead of this coffee and uh, that coffee right there is courtesy of Mr. Salty Crop Collectibles he sent that to me and uh, next week we might have a live stream of stuff that uh, that Salty sent in or Vince just to because uh, that's the reason that he sent that stuff in I believe was for live streams so uh, we'll probably probably do that I'm going to be checking out that fruit and I forgot the uh, forgot the crackers in there. Get that tea going. There's the chocolate. The candy here. We can check this out if you guys want to see it. Be fresh, wet night. Oh, Fred! Hey, I'm not as thick as you drunk I am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the super chat, Fred. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I saved these crisp breads because uh, there wasn't really enough jelly to eat them, eat all these. 
uh, let's see if they're still any good. I'd say it's questionable at best. Get crumbs everywhere. Let me get these crumbs out of, out of the tray. <sighs> All right, let's see if this is any good. Oh, yeah, buddy. Perfect. I'm surprised. Truly, I am. I thought they were going to be uh, stale. But they're good to go. Still got these uh, Ruskies sitting around here, too. Rusks. God, they're so, so stiff. Let's see if these are still any good. Yeah. Huh. About the same. Go with some uh, lime flavored green tea. There's what those pellets look like. Try some on their own here, like I did the others. Oh, wow. That's got a really nice natural lime flavor. Hmm. Really good. There's all those weird little pellets. <laughs> I think it's so strange the way they do these drinks, but, uh, I mean, it works. Let's see. This takes 250 mils. Get the measuring cup out here. Is this one refilled? Hang on here. Yeah, there we go. Use some deja blue water. Two hundred and fifty mils. Yeah, we're gonna do a little. Nope, yep, guess we're going to go right at 250. I probably prefer it a little under the 250, but uh, 250 will work. Let's take a look here. Here we go. There we are. Uh, anybody have any idea on the timer on the uh, on the food? I guess I could move the tray into, into the frame. Yep. Definitely had a little, uh, that beer. Uh, whew. I gotta say, man, that, that's a strong beer. I guess, I, and it's not supposed to, it, the intensity is not, it's not supposed to get, the alcohol content is not supposed to go up with age on a beer. Um, I don't think it is wine either, but, uh, it, it's kind of hard to argue that fact when you drink a 40-year-old beer. But I don't drink at all, so uh, maybe that's why. And I did chug that beer in three drinks, uh, chunks and all. <laughs> yum, yum. Yum, yum. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I'm going to go get the... Should I get... Is it time to get the main? I think it's time to get the main. Uh, well, let's just... We'll do the coffee real quick. Let's just do that. Okay, here's my coffee. I was like, where's my coffee cup? My ball bros, which I got my uh, my MRE Nation one cleaned out, but uh, last time I checked, they didn't have any inventory going on there, so which kind of sucks. Now, I brought a bunch of sugars in here at one point. I have to grab some when I go get the uh, main to throw in the coffee. Get old Type Two from Salty Salty Crock or Vince here. Good stuff. The old Type 2 does taste different. This here is, uh, I believe this is spray dried. And the old Type 2 is freeze dried. What does it say on here? 
does it say? Am I, am I missing something here? I had a quarter of a canteen cup and stir a lot of water to chemically purify and stay in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's spray dried. Freeze dried is uh, usually more chunky, I believe. Uh, I could be wrong. I, I guess they could make it either way, I think. But I think this is spray dried. I really don't know what the difference between spray dried and freeze dried is. Um, I think spray dried has to be a very fine, small granule like that uh, to have the ability to spray dry it at all. I want to throw again out, hey, B Temple's here, man. You guys got to check out B Temple's channel. That dude, he sent me uh, some really cool stuff that's going to be like my first, not exactly my first, but pretty close to my first reviews back. Uh, I did film something today, working on trying to get my program, my editing program onto the computer. Having troubles with that for some reason. There we go. Not too much water. Not too much water. Alright, I gotta go get that main. It's gonna cook too long. I don't want it cooking anyways. I just want it heating up. Sorry guys, it took me a second there. Ended up ripping the label and everything. A little bit of a buzz going on. That's all. That's all. A little bit. Oh, yeah. Man, it's hot. Swelled the uh, can up just a just a tad bit. Just a little bit. What we'll set there? Okay, consensus. Anybody want to see this? This uh, I guess it's I guess this is lunch meat, because the other one had to be the pork shoulder. Um, they're calling this lunch meat. It's called, definitely going to be more like pate. It's probably even liver. Uh, I'm going to call it liver lunch meat. Lady Gaga is on TV. This is more important. <laughs> Lady Gaga. Yeah. Well. I honestly couldn't disagree. I think Lady Gaga is uh, is pretty low on the priority list of, of anybody. Uh, let's add some sugar. Sugar. No, 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 no. Tracy Phillips and I work for Canada. Huh. Are you kidding? Of course. Okay. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Boom. Domino sugar. The dominoes fall. I don't even know what this is. Maui brand natural I, cane sugar. I believe I got this, uh, had leftovers. This is natural, like, it's definitely got a nice shine to it, doesn't it? But natural sugar from like uh, Chipotle, I think. There we go. Let's get all that out of there. No reason to waste any. Put the uh, other domino in there. We should all congratulate the teachers working at home, and we should also be grateful to the truck drivers living in their trucks and not not meeting anyone. Uh, yeah, th that and everybody is uh, having to work in 
places like Dollar General and uh, your you know just local grocery stores and anybody that's working in the fast food industry right now that's keeping a lot of people fed right now a ton of people um, the teachers yep that, that's a that's a whole weird situation right there that that kind of depends on how much effort the teachers putting in uh, I know the ones around here don't seem to be putting much effort in let's try out this beef fresh wet wipe let's see what it's all about it's kind of got an orange tint to it you guys can't probably see it on camera but it does have an orange tint to it just got the wife a, a Samsung Galaxy Note 9 for her birthday and let me tell you guys holy cow that thing's amazing I was messing around with the camera on it just looking at it really I only looked at it for like maybe two or three minutes if that not even really that long but just looked at it and yeah look at it do you guys know what the look at it meme is uh, this thing smells awesome it's definitely got a really nice fresh lemon scent uh, it doesn't smell like pledge or anything like that it's not that intense but it's uh I don't know it's got a really really gentle pleasant smell to it okay let's take our big old sharp spoon this thing right here that right there will literally cut you maybe if I take my knife and scrape that still pretty sharp on the top <laughs> nah I'm still I'm still not going to use it I'll use the American one JW I've been watching anime and reading man manga manga M A N G A manga Am I pronouncing that right, or am I just drunk? Okay, stirred up the coffee, which it didn't feel like there was any sugar in the bottom of that. Let's give this, uh, let's give this tea a stir with the chunks at the bottom here. Wow, that's a lot of chunks in there still. Alright, before I even get started, while I have a fresh palate, I'm going to try this lime tea. Oh, that's great. It does have that green tea flavor with a little bit of a, with a lime twist. And it usually lemon is thrown in the mix. And green tea, I don't know, not so much, I don't think. Maybe the green tea that I have in the, maybe, maybe it does have lemon in it. But lime is not, not uh, what I usually see. This is really good. Almost looks like the World's Fair beer. <laughs> true that. True enough. Except this dissolved pretty much, I think. Oh, no, there's a pretty good little bit of chunks still sitting on the bottom. Right here. Yeah, there's some chunks down there. But that's all sugar and sweet stuff. Maybe green tea, even. But yeah, that, the the... Trust me, the World's Fair beer, that last swig that I took was, whew, super duper chunky. Um, Alright, here we go. This is a Hungarian vegetable stew with sausage. And it's very, very, very hot. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look at that. That looks like some gourmet stuff. Goodness gracious. Alright. I'm going to break into it with my old uh, MCI spoon here. Steve gave me a bunch of these MCI spoons before. If you guys, 
if there happens to be anybody in my chat right now, which I doubt there will be, that doesn't know who Steve is, go check out Steve1989's channel. Link down in my description. So there's some really nice chunks of, uh, similar to like, I would say like a kielbasa sausage. But let me tell y'all, this thing is full of oil. Look at the oil on that. I'd almost not mind going in there and draining that oil off of that. That looks like uh, some kind of like... I don't know what that is. Like squash or something? Uh, let's see what else we got in here. It's like we got some kind of groats. Uh, there's a bean of some kind right there. There's a bean. So uh, red peppers in there, green peppers in there. There's a green bean. Obviously, it's a tomato base. Steve, Steve, he's our man. If he can't eat it, nobody can. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna try the green bean. Hmm. Okay. Definitely uh, pick up a lot on that tomato there. What else we got in here? What is that? is that is that like a mushroom maybe what is that looks almost like bologna or something maybe a mushroom i gotta try that on on its own oh yeah it's a mushroom okay mushroom what else do we have in here that could be cucumber i guess with the green on it still. We got red and green peppers. Lots and lots of sausage. And the tomato base there. It looks like I've pretty much picked out the, most of the ingredients. I'd say I'm missing a couple. There's some other like little seeds there. Those look like cucumber seeds. Yep. That's what that is. Okay. Now, first of all, I'm just going to try it, you know, the way it came before I add any salt or pepper or anything to it. Got plenty of vegetables underneath that piece of sausage right there. Here we go. Down the hatch. G Schultz says zucchini. All right, here we go. Mm. Wow. Mm. That is a really nice. Tastes like a pork sausage. It's not really spicy or anything either. You know, a lot of times those sausages will have a little bit of spice to them. But it's it's not. It's very home like tastes like a home cooked meal the the tomato sauce comes through there the oil is really like the main thing that I, I honestly it's just too too much oil for my personal liking but if you were stuck out in the cold or burning a crap ton of calories that oil would be just fine and it doesn't it doesn't throw the taste off and it's just a texture a little bit and obviously my lips are covered with oil right now as well uh the vegetables are really nice texture-wise. You can differentiate between different things in there, which is always a good good thing. That everything just isn't all the same same texture and consistency. I do like these green beans though. Mm. That bean I saw earlier was out of a green bean. That's what that was. Now this definitely needs salt and pepper. Absolutely. And it's going to get it. It's going to get it. Here we go. Let's see. Whoa. Came out way too fast in that one little spot right there. I'll mix it in. This is a big old can. Yeah, I'll just mix it in. I still didn't use all that salt that they gave me. It's going to get some pepper too. But that sausage is really nice. The texture's 
it's not too soft it's got a nice firmness to it uh, it's, it's really hearty it doesn't uh, have any sweetness or anything like that there's none of that going on in here which ruins a savory meal for me when it's got sweetness going on we're gonna put that whole pack of pepper in there for sure yeah and we're gonna mix this up because there's I dumped way too much salt in a couple spots gonna take me a second because uh playing a playing a game of don't spill this here could probably use it even more seasoning than what I just gave it to be quite honest this one meal right here could have used both packs now that chicken that I had last week oh my goodness it was so rich and savory and oh my goodness it just seasoned perfectly I wish I had another can of that to make, like, uh, I could make some really cool chip dip with that. Like, add a little bit more, like, uh, shredded cheese to it. Maybe a little bit of bean. Uh, and then just dip that stuff up. Alright, here we go. Big old nice chunk of snossage right there. I'm going to add just a little bit, a little bit of this salt on it. Because I feel like it needs it. And, uh, yeah, let's see what that's like. Mm. Boy, was I wrong. Holy cow. Didn't need that salt. Needs more pepper, though. We'll put some uh, Sebastian, buddy. Sebastian. Pup. Hey, buddy. Need to go outside and potty? Huh? Need to go out and potty? I'll get you a treat as soon as I'm done, buddy. All right. Hot diggity dog sauce is next. I feel like I could cut these pieces of sausage in half and be happy with the bite that I'm getting. I do already feel like uh, I got some indigestion starting. I think that's the red sauce and the oil. bit of this yep a little bit too much all right here we go down the hatch mm. Mm. oh wow yeah it was too much Woo! Mm. Oh, delicious is here. Sorry, I've been wrapped up in the food. Not looking at the comments. Now my mouth is on fire. Whew. <clears throat> I would say, you know what? I'm not putting it on an individual bite's not going to work for me, but I'm going to mix some of this in to uh, bring the spice level up a little bit because it needs it. After adding the salt and pepper, it's still a little bit, uh, a little bit easy lean on the uh, the seasoning area. Uh, area. I'm looking into it now, Zeno. Laugh out loud. I don't know what you're. Come here too, but 740 trappers and outdoorsmen. One thing I have noticed with the canned rations, I always <clears throat> always shake them after heating to try to mix the oils and stuff back together. Yeah, this thing right here was so oily that yeah, it just it won't really mix in. 
A lot of oil there. Mm. Make it look very unappetizing. <laughs> Let me get you a good close up of it there. Yeah, I mean, uh, as far as appetizing, I mean, it'd probably look a little better if I dumped it out, but I doubt I'll finish all this because it's a huge portion, but I do want to eat it because it's really good food. Oh, oh yeah. Switching jobs, huh? That's crazy. Mm. One thing I'll say about the uh, outside of that sausage is the, the rind that's on it's really tough. But it's a really nice, hearty, savory sausage, I gotta say. You know, I think some of these would go pretty well with it. Actually, now that I think about it. see here. Is that two pieces? Okay, it's one piece. Yeah, that, uh, that hot sauce got my nose running. Whew. It's really good stuff. It's nothing like the uh, vegetable stew that I would have here, though. We'd have, like, corn, green beans, peas, um, a tomato base. Same tomato base we'd have for chili. Um... So yeah, CT Trucker, uh, Canadian Trucker is starting a new job. Got to wish him luck on that. Always sucks starting a new job. Let's crack open this honey and see uh, see what it's looking like. Oh solidified okay well I've got the uh, the butter knife here Let's see if I can get some of this out of here it's gonna be pretty solid yeah it's not too bad actually some of that on this uh, this crisp bread here rye crisp bread is delicious told me or Peter is his uh, American name, or Peort. Be his Polish. I that's how I'd pronounce it. Maybe that's wrong. It's probably wrong. But that is a uh, very real honey right there. Honey never goes bad. It will crystallize like this, but never go bad. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. Wow, that has a really nice, whoop, 
sorry guys, really nice honey flavor to it. I want to, oops, I want to bite of that just on its own. Like that. Mmm. Tastes like the honey that I'm used to. I mean, it's granular. It's got a really nice grittiness to it. Which I'm not really used to eating honey like this, but uh, I like it. A lot of the honey you get in the United States is not even really honey. It's fake. Corn syrup. Crap. B. Temple says it'll be unemployed once again. Uh, once the school year ends, and who knows if the school will open again in September. My province painted a gloomy picture and wondered we may be bad until November. Huh. Until November. That's crazy. I think the coffee's appropriate to wash that down. My mouth is still on fire from the uh, hot sauce that I put into that. Of course, that's American Type 2 coffee. It's always good stuff. Love that stuff. Now, I want to try a piece of one of these with a bite of that vegetable stew. Hungarian vegetable stew. Yeah, I'm glad Delicious could make it, man. You guys, if you don't know who Delicious is, go check out his channel. Really good guy, man. Really good guy. From over there in Poland. That's where this meal right here actually came from. It was from him. Let's see how this goes with the uh, addition of the tank tread on there. Those caraway seeds are so overpowering, flavor-wise. You all right, buddy? I'll give you more medicine here in just a minute, bud. As soon as I finish up, okay? As soon as I finish up, I'll give you more. Let's see what this uh, this freeze dried fruit looks like. I think that's. I'm pretty sure this is. Oh wow! Somebody just is it Jesse? Just ordered DoorDash, getting Chick Fil A. You can't go wrong with Chick Fil A. Oh my gosh, I love Chick Fil A. That is the food is so good, man. Let's see what we got. Okay, I see strawberries and bananas. Looks like, uh, is that a raspberry? What is that? I don't think that's a blueberry. It might be. It might be a blueberry. Big one. Uh, looks like we have some pineapple in there. This is very well freeze-dried, too. I mean, it's very light and airy. <clears throat> and you guys know me i prefer oh delicious says that's a cherry huh lots of strawberries in there this looks like a piece of pineapple i'm gonna try this first oh wow i don't know if i've i don't remember eating any um uh, freeze-dried pineapples on their own <clears throat> outside of eating this mix right here i've had this a few times I've eaten a couple of these rations, but uh, it didn't stick out in my head. I just dumped it in my hand and ate it. Let's, uh, I'm going to eat here. I want to try the strawberry on its own. The pineapple is really exploding with pineapple flavor. The sweetness is really nice, but it's also got a tangy um, bit to it. Sweet and tangy. Just like you would imagine a pineapple to be. See how the strawberries are. 
Hmm. Really light and airy. They were nice and ripe whenever they freeze dried them. Which makes all the difference. If they're not ripe, they won't be sweet. But the strawberry is sweet and sour and tangy. And nice and crunchy. And then it just kind of turns to dust and evaporates in your mouth. Let's see how the banana is. Mm. It's got a little more crunch to it than everything else. But really nice texture. Try one of these cherries. I don't think. Uh, yeah, that's what that was. Woo! Those are tart. Sour. Not much sweetness going on there. I think that's the last one I have. I want my son to try that. Eat another banana or pineapple, maybe. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Huh. I'm not real sure what that is. Hmm. I think it was banana. It's so small it's hard to tell. Yeah, the pineapple is really nice. A lot of strawberry in there. Mmm, piece of pear. That makes sense. And I just must have ate another larger piece of pear in that bite that I just took. Really nice. I think that would probably mix pretty well with this honey. I still got a lot of that flavor in my mouth. I'm going to try a little honey with that. The honey's amazing. Nice and gritty. Mmm. Yeah, that's nice. And the honey will mix well with the tea. The chunks are gone that were at the bottom, which is good. Yep, I'm going to save this for one of you guys. Oh, history just came in with a super chat there. Much love, everyone. <clears throat> Hope that beer doesn't make you sick, man, man. Great live stream, bud, as always. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no ill effects from the beer whatsoever so far and that's been uh it's been a while ago mm. been a good meal gotta say and these are nice and chewy vitamin c candies uh dickies <laughs> i guess that's what you dicky uh, zvit and then you got your Ooh, that almost ended up in the stew kofik kofik coffee candy so these things are, are really fantastic get a good look at that nice close-up of that looks like a root beer candy huh uh yeah but thank you for that uh super chat there history savior appreciate that man you guys go check out history savior's channel i was watching his uh world war ii unboxing there yesterday or day before some really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Down to my last 10. I do have... Nope, I did. I smoked it on uh, Josh's live stream after show the other night. So I'm down to 9. 30-year-old camel. 30-year-old camel. From a can. i got to find another can of these sealed. Or something. i got to find another can of, can of smokes for the live stream. I'm not out. I mean... Oh, man. Dang it. I do still have a can up here. These cigarettes Paris. I don't know if these are going to be any good or if these are going to be... <laughs> these are going to suck. So, it'll be interesting to find out uh, what those will be like. I'll just knock something down off my shelf. I got a bunch of stuff I need to put up on my shelves. Uh, got a World War II um, pilot survival ration. Uh, I've got a few things, actually. So I'm going to break out the lighter that K-Man gave me. That's what I was 
I'll just light these things with. See if it's still going to light. I think it's. Yep, yep, it's lit. Just barely. Just barely. I mean, it's still lighting, but it's just not pushing out the flame like it used to. <clears throat> oh. All right, guys. I'll be right, right back. One second. get sorry about that guys uh, about a little over an hour ago I chugged that beer <laughs> and uh, pretty much went right through me so I had to take a break there but again I want to say a huge thanks to Miss Marilyn for that super chat she sent in I'm going to go through the list of super chats while I'm uh, smoking a 30 year old smoke here but definitely Miss Marilyn uh, History Savior just came in with uh, that one there at the end. But let me go back to the very beginning. Jesse Michael started it out. <coughs> Excuse me. Smoking, everyone's awesome. Hope everyone is safe and well. Can't wait to see if the beer has held up. I mean, it did and it didn't, I would say. It did hold up well enough, for sure. Uh, and then Miss Robin came in with a uh, Your Amazing GIF. Um, in the 20, and then Miss Marilyn came in with a huge, huge, huge super chat. And I can't recommend that you guys go check out Ann and Ellen enough. I, I, hopefully, more people stumble upon these videos and realize, well, maybe I should just Google that real quick because you don't have to take my word for it. Just, you know, look around at reviews and stuff of, of what Ann and Ellen gooey butter cakes are all about. And they also sell coffee and stuff over there, too. <clears throat> and then uh, your old pal Fernbart came in, which was really kind to him to come in like that. And Bob Gaskin uh, over at Minotaur and MRE Nation, which there's links in my description. And Fred Thorne came in with a really good, funny um, super chat. And History Savior came in. And then, oh, <laughs> CT, <laughs> he popped in right there. As, uh, as I'm in here reading these. So CT says, don't forget me. <laughs> thank you for that super chat, dude. Holy cow. Man, oh man, thank you so much. And you guys got to go check out CT's channel. He does some awesome Canadian pizza reviews and Canadian truck driving <laughs> videos and IMP reviews, Canadian IMP reviews. I do. I watch his videos all the time. Uh, they're, they're well worth the watch. So drop on in over there. And uh, History Savior, anybody that I've recommended that has a channel, you should click on their names in this chat and go check out their channel. If you like what they got going on, yeah, just go ahead and subscribe and tell them, uh, tell them Old Smokey sent you over there, for sure. Always, uh, always like to hear when people get recommendations from my channel, um, because they deserve it. Uh, Rod Garage every day says, "Hey, Smokey, don't forget me." Um, Rod Garage every day. I I don't know that I've ever went to your channel, and I can't go to it right now. I don't think I can. I came with my other phone. Hang on. Rod Garage two, Smokey History Savior says, "Uh, did I miss a super chat?" Hang on, I might have. Nope, I didn't. But that's okay. I'm gonna go check out Rod Garage's channel right now. Live chat. Back to live chat. Going to Rod Garage. Mm -hmm. Beef 
from Groot's. Oh, okay. So I got a message from uh, from CT saying he he's having a Lithuanian tonight. Uh, what was that you said you was having? A uh, something in Groot's. Huh. I'm not gonna be able to read it. All right. Let me go to YouTube and see if I can get to Rod Garage's Rod Garage's Garage. Rod. Rod Garage, Rod Garage, Rod Garage every day. I knew it was something more than that. Click on my live stream, which gives me an ad, which is good. It's good, it's good, it's good. 51 thumbs up. It looks like 52 after I just clicked it myself. Um, 64 folks in here. If you guys wouldn't mind hitting that thumbs up, letting uh, letting Google know, or hitting the thumbs down if you don't like it either. Uh, that I'm I'm fine either way. As long as Google gets a response, they don't care if it's up or down, to be quite honest. Okay, Rod Garage. Rod Garage. Going to his channel as soon as I can find him in the chat here. There's CT. How did I miss him? Oh, there it is. Huh, it's not going to let me go to his channel. Okay, so I'm going to have to type it in. Rod. Garage. Every. Day. Boom. Okay, his channel's not coming up. Only thumbs down Fern Bark when he doesn't curse, <laughs> cuss enough. <laughs> okay, so what's popping up here is uh, a lot of motor trend. I'm not seeing it. Let me see if I can maybe type in channel, C H A N E L. I'm not finding it. Rod Garage every day. I know I've got it typed in right. Huh. Yep, it's not letting me go to your channel for some reason. Or it's not coming up. Rod Garage. I'm, I'm scrolling through uh, channels here. Believe me, it's vintage. I never fault anyone who sends something along history. Oh, believe me, if it's vintage, I never fault anyone who sends something along. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we always like the, the old stuff. I've got some, like, old cans of food and stuff. I've thought about just kind of going through and opening up a bunch of it. Rock Ross the Smokey. Uh, I don't... Oh, I don't have... I don't have videos on my channel, but if I get one... If I get one sub, I'll post. Well, if I could, I don't know how to sub. Uh, I don't know how to sub to you without going to you. You know, it's not showing me your channel at all. I would sub to you if I could find it. It won't let me do it through the chat. Let me try it on here. No, it's not letting me do any of that. Huh used to be you could click on anybody's name in the chat and go to their channel. And now it's not let. Well, of course, it's not going to let me in a live stream. And maybe it's not letting me because it's my channel. Uh, it just says, report remove, put user in timeout, hide user on this channel, and add moderator. Huh. And then, as I typed it in... Rod Garage every day. I know I typed it in right. Huh. I don't know why I can't find it. It should still pop up no matter what. Rod Garage. Maybe if I go to Google. Let me let me try that. Rod. Day. channel 
Come on. Tim Motor Trend. It's not show it's not popping up on Google either. Motor Trend. Dan from Rods Garage. Dan Rods and Customs, sorry. Well. Yep, it's not letting me. I I I spent five minutes trying to <laughs> figure it out, man. If I could figure out how to get to your channel, I would. Maybe it's doing that because you don't have any videos. I don't I don't think so. I don't think that's the case. It's just not letting me go to uh, go to it for some reason. I'll tell you what. Uh, make a comment on this video back out of the live chat and make a comment down at the bottom and I'll see if I can get to it that way which I went uh, I went well above 19,000 subscribers I'm gonna have to do something for 20,000 which is gonna be probably within the next few weeks I would say probably I don't know maybe about a month or so eh, probably longer than that maybe two months just depends about too much, but I'm going to start posting videos, so it'll probably go quicker. Uh, but going to have to do something really cool for 20k. What should I do? I'd like to do a video. I think my format's going to change a little bit where I have the camera flipped around a little more. And I'm going to use both of my cameras and put one of them back here, up here, that's facing me so I can cut away to like where you can actually see me sitting here eating. Which it'll be a weird angle, but it, it'll still work. It'll be short, little tiny short cuts in into the into the video. Man, that honey is good stuff. I tell you what, I did have a piece of chocolate to start this whole thing out. No one can click on the name and get on a channel anymore for some reason, which sucks for finding other people's channels and people finding our channel. Yeah, but I, I've been saying that you could click on the name and go to the channel because the last time I checked, you could do that. Uh, hasn't been that long ago that I did that either. Pork brains challenge, Smokey. Oh, God. I've eaten my share of pork brains. I can't handle the cholesterol, dude. Like 1,900% uh, of, of your daily value of cholesterol in one little teeny tiny can. The honey and cherries are the bomb. Oh, I could see mixing the honey in there. My son's not home right now. I want him to get to try some of this freeze-dried fruit. <laughs> I'd love to be able to go back to the set of my show, but that's... uh. That's in New York. <laughs> if we uh, if we're filming a season two, me and Josh will probably do something like that. My little puppy dog is uh, he needs more medicine. Mm. That chocolate is amazing. So good. I'm not a huge fan of just eating chocolate on its own. But that right there, I get report block, report or block when I click the name. Yeah, I know it's it sucks, uh, James. It's nothing like it used to be. It used to be, uh, it'd give you the option go to channel, and that was like the first thing that popped up in the little options, go to channel. And now it's 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 gone. It's gone. Uh, Miss Marilyn says no. All the durian fruit is disgusting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just durian fruit is ugh. I can't handle the taste and texture. I'm sending some out to some random reviewers as a challenge. Laugh out loud. You guys have no clue who's getting one. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, good luck with the pork brains. I'm telling you that cholesterol that's in those things is un freaking believable it's really unbelievable commented on the the okay the mystery okay i'll go to it right now and see if i can find it i have to go to my channel my videos 
Mr. Yamori. Boom. Comments. Let's see. Let's see if I can go to your channel. Oh! Boom. Boom. Look at that. Subscribed. I am now subscribed to your channel. There it is. Oh, I guess Josh stopped by briefly, he said. Stopped by briefly. I don't know. Uh, I didn't happen to see him in the chat, but uh, cool. Cool, 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 cool. But it's about time for me to wrap this one up and uh, clean up my mess and whatnots here. Next week, I uh, plan on doing some uh, more old stuff. Probably military related. Maybe not. We'll just have to see. But uh, I will be probably making a special occasion to enjoy... Where did I put those? Wait a minute. Did I knock them? I think I knocked them down. Alright. Oh, here they are. I'll be having one of these. That History Savior sent in. But you get a nice whoop, focus. You get that close up there. You can see these are... Uh, night. What? Did we determine the year on these? I don't know. They're definitely World War II era. So they're probably 1939 to 1945. Somewhere in there. Focus. But yeah, there's the eagle. Super cool. Had one of these last... Last week? Was it last week I had one of these? I think it was. But uh, they've held up tremendously. Believe it or not. Which I was quite surprised, uh, judging by the dude on. But, uh, yeah, they've held up, held up. They're very, 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 very smokable still. So... I got some food to finish. I didn't want to sit here and munch in front of you guys to munch this whole thing down. So, hey Smokey, if I post, will YouTube send me money? <laughs> oh gosh. Um, the short answer to that is no. It takes a long time, or you have to get very lucky. You have now the the regulations have changed. Rod's Garage. I'll tell you real quick. You have to have like over a thousand subscribers. You have to have over a hundred thousand minutes of watch time within one month or ninety days. I think maybe it's one or the other. Uh, you have to have um, you have to have those two things right there, and you have to have a thousand. I think it's a I think it's a thousand subscribers or something. It's something crazy like that. You have to meet that criteria. And you, you can go ahead and monetize your videos right out of the gate. And, and the money that, you, that you know, you're technically making will build up. And you could do that. And, and as long once it adds up to $100, you'll get it. If you post something that's really interesting that, get, that takes off right away, you might gain the subscribers in one month. And you might easily hit the time in one month posting consistent videos, or even one video could do it. It's very possible to to where you'd meet the criteria and, and make make that. It's a hundred dollar threshold. After you make a hundred dollars, it'll add up, add up, add up until it hits that hundred dollars, and then they'll pay out. They could take you a year to make that hundred dollars, and then they will pay it out to you. Uh, it just kind of continues to add up throughout that twelve months or however long it takes you. So yeah. I mean, it's it's possible. Uh, just depends. Like, if you got some really cool vehicle content, like hot rods or something like that, rods garage, you might have something uh, you know that that could go viral or semi-viral or you know like or even a mini-viral video, which would be like maybe what some of my videos have done. I think the most any of my videos have ever done is like a little over a hundred thousand, which is not that much in the grand scheme of things when it comes to YouTube. When I first started this, I never imagined I'd have a video that would hit 100,000 views, though. So, unless you hit a million subs, you're broke. <laughs> well, it takes me almost two years to get to 380 subs. 
I mean, History Savior, everybody's different, man. I mean, YouTube picks and chooses the ones that they like and don't like. It, it is not an algorithm. They can say that all they want. That might have a small part to do with it at some points. It used to have a lot to do with it, but it doesn't anymore. If people liked what you did and watched your videos, you could get on the trending page. But anymore, they pick and choose who they want on the trending page. And they that's just like, for instance, Rhett and Link, a Good Mythical Morning. YouTube picks those guys because they're brand safe, they're friendly, they're ad friendly, and they throw them on the trending page all the time. That's why they're there. And that's someone making a conscious decision in the YouTube, uh, you know, whatever offices and saying that, that that's, you know, they want them on the trending page. But if, like I said, if you got like a, a if you go through, a, if you go and in, get into a different genre, and do like uh, like hot rods and cars and something. You may have put up the right thumbnail and uh, have you know the the right amount of time, which would be around a ten or twelve minute video. Then you may do really really well. My videos or my, my videos, but these live streams like this with that are two hours long, like YouTube won't promote them at all. I'm actually they almost shadow ban them. They don't even tell my subscribers that these things are up on my channel. Even if you're subscribed to me and have notifications turned on, YouTube still doesn't notify people that, that I've put a live stream up or whatever. So, and that's been going on for, <laughs> I don't know, three, almost three years now, or maybe right at three years. So it's a lot harder to make it on YouTube than it used to be, but there are still definitely ways that you can do it. It just, it just all depends on, on the angle that you take and uh, the content that you put up. So... I guess I could just say good luck <laughs> with that. Um, Laugh Out Loud stayed five, stayed mad 5 a.m., Gabriel just said. But all right, guys, I got a mess to clean up here and uh, great meal. I would say overall, like this one wasn't my favorite, but the last main that I had was definitely in my top three. It, right up there with being one of my favorites, if not my favorite main that I've ever had out of a ration. Absolutely insanely good. And I look forward to, to getting to try that one again, man. Holy cow, so good. So, uh, I really need to say thanks to each and every one of you guys that, that sent in a super chat, because especially Miss Marilyn, every, everybody, actually, everybody who felt like it was cool you know that 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 sent anything like that in and thought enough and felt enough to to do that that's much appreciated i'd never ask you guys to do that the only time i ever did that was uh well i got some pretty crappy comments the other day uh which i'm not even going to get into that so that doesn't matter but anyway thank you guys for that thank you guys for hanging out with me this saturday night and uh you know spending a lot of you guys spending a couple hours here with me i really appreciate you guys I, I really mean that too so uh hopefully you guys can come back next saturday and i'll try to get josh or, or matt which was the showrunner director of the show try to get them to stop by and uh maybe get them on skype or something like that and uh probably try to get gusto and try to get some of these other reviewers involved and get them in on like skype calls or maybe i can figure out how to do it on a laptop i doubt i'll do that because it'll just it doesn't work with my setup the way I do it here. I'd have to set it up more like a podcast to do it that way. And I wouldn't be able to have a camera turned around to have food like this. Um, but maybe one day we'll do something like that. But every Wednesday the, there's the after show for it. Uh, whoa, Night Smokey, thank you. Viper, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that last minute super chat, my dude. Holy crap. Um, wow, thanks, dude. Uh sidetrack there what did I what was I saying uh, oh yeah every Wednesday night on Josh McCougar's channel if anybody wants to go over there and, and interact with the uh, after eating history show uh, we've got some of the crew that come over on you know that he brings in and me and him chat about what whatever was on the show that night so it's it's really really kind of cool to do that so if you guys want to show up to that and uh or just rewatch the the rerun or whatever that's cool too but yeah man uh thanks matt for that uh 
that super chat there. Uh, Viper GTS MRE. You guys can go check out uh, Viper's channel too. He posts a lot over there. So, all right, guys. Going to get this thing cleaned up here. Get this mess cleaned up. And uh, overall, great meal. And I'll see definitely see you guys next Saturday if I don't see you before then. So, I guess really all I got left to do is to say, oh yeah, thanks Delicious for uh, providing the meal here. And uh, now all I got left to do is say thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you on the next live stream. Later.
うんうんうん
work better. Thank <laughs> you. 